morning and welcome to St. John's. Please stand as you are able for the service to begin. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last days will stand upon the earth. And though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see and my eyes behold, who is my friend and not a stranger. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labor. We have come here today to remember before God our sister Janet, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, and to commit her ashes to be buried, and to comfort one another in grief. May God be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember Janet before you this day and thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your compassion, we beseech thee, console those who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been transformed in the love of Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered into the company of all your saints. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. a reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of mortals and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. For whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became an adult, I put away childish things. For now we see as in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. join together in saying the 23rd Psalm, as printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the readings, and the family remembrances are welcome at this time. I have a few things to say about um, my Aunt Janet. Um, I'll try to keep my voice up. I have to finagle with these glasses since I have had new eyes in the last month and trying to learn how to use glasses and my eyes again. Um, Janet Chenery was the last of her family generation um, of Peter Chenery, her brother, Vern Lee, Chenry Wadsworth, her sister, um, Hollis Chenry, Margaret Carmichael, Penny Chenry Tweedy, Burnley Perrin, and Ed Perrin. Ted and I and Will grew up with these people. Um, these people um, had a, a great effect on Janet Chenry's life. And their parents, Chris Chenry, Bill Chenry, Margaret, um, and Danny Perrin. To, uh, to kind of understand how Janet got to be Janet, we have to understand that the parents pushed these, each of these children to be as educated as they would be and to find something useful to do in life. Peter went on to into the sciences, uh, and Burnley went into fashion. Uh, Burnley Perrin worked in World War II as uh, taught herself uh, to the various dialects of the Middle East and, and basically taught herself to read uh, mail and worked during the war in that effort. Ned Perrin, uh, younger, uh, went off to the Korean War as a forward advisor. Uh, to those of you who don't know what that means, you go two miles ahead of the tanks and tell them where the enemy is. Very dangerous work. And Ned ended up uh, as an English teacher at, at Dartmouth. Um, and Hollis, uh, a professor, uh, economics. Margaret helped found the, the uh, Desert Museum in Tucson. And Penny went on to the family businesses and her horses. Uh, Danny was a writer. Uh, Bill, Bill, the father, was a writer. Uh, Margaret, his wife, my grandmother um, was a psychologist and pretty much a, when I was a young one, the family psychologist. Uh, I would submit that uh, Janet became, took her place. Um, there were strong family ties. Um, they talk about, uh, if, you, if you read the history of some of the judges in Boston, they talk about Emperor of the Breakfast Table. Uh, that, can, that could properly describe what went on at family dinners, which were frequent when I was young. Uh, and Janet participated in those, although she was always the quietest, uh, but very thoughtful. Um, so the, the family beat was to be useful, help others, and you know, learn to read and to participate. Janet uh, loved books. She went to work initially for Bill Papworth at the uh, Journal of Taxation. She then went to work at Golden Books and eventually Doubleday. I asked her as a young man, why children's books? Why aren't you, you know, writing like your father or whatever? And her answer was simple, that children's books uh, presented a simple, clear message and the, and the artwork that, sub that supported the, the story would lead children to have a better understanding of the world uh, Janet, as a 
uh, book editor, um, did something different in that she published three of her own books. Wolfie, about a spider that, you know, children uh, somehow taught to hate spiders, and this, was, this book did the opposite, taught you about spiders. The Toad Hunt and Pickles and Jake, and we all love those books. Um, but you know, Janet, for, for me, was a, a great listener. Um, if a complicated problem would come up, uh, I often would talk to her. Um, as some of you know, I became her uh, trustee for a period of time, and we would talk about serious issues. But what I did in preparation for this talk today was to talk, since I had moved away from this area almost 30 years ago, or more than 30 years ago, I, I talked to a lot of folks. And I, you know, Owen told me about her empathy for everybody, which repeated Holly talked, her, talked about her authenticity. Um, but I want to read you what, what um, Will wrote, um, because he can't be here. Um, he wrote the following about his mother. She was an admired and fearless lady. She put up with a toe-headed, mindful second child in the middle of huge struggles of her own. I feel blessed to have been so fortunate to be her offspring. Even now, as I think of her, there is nothing between my thoughts of her but admiration and love. We all come into this world unknowing with unknowing limitations. Ma opened every door for me. I feel her spirit like a light of wisdom all around me as I think of her now. I am glad, uh, I am glad to share this light with everyone here in the church. While working to support us, my ma edited, edited children's books. When I grew long hair during the 60s, she smiled. And as, my, as I and my young wife went off to Woodstock to hear a little music, she kept smiling. And my comment to Will after that was, and you stayed in Woodstock. That's where he's living. And uh, Corey wrote, wrote me uh, when she was about eight. She's, Aunt Janet had a kind and stately warmth. And Corey, my daughter, who's sitting in the back row there. Aunt Janet uh, had a kind and stately warmth encountered in few other people. Though she said little, she listened with conviction, looking at you straight in the eyes and seeking to understand more than, you, than just what you said. What you felt was clearly paramount to her. One of my clearest memories was telling her a long and likely silly idea for a children's book about a frog. I was eight years old and loved to give long, rambling explanations. She didn't say much in response, a reaction I rather got used to after listening for an hour. Uh, people's brains tended to be numb. A few days later, Janet called, called me and asked whether I had, uh, whether uh, I had been upset by her lack of response, and of course I was not, and she told me what in fact she thought I should do with my story. That was typical of Janet. Ted uh, wrote me that about an incident he rem best remembered of his mother the first time Gabrielle and I saw Janet after my return from India and our nearly instant marriage, as we walked into the living room, Janet walked out of her room and welcomed Gabrielle with such genuine and relaxed openness that as Gabrielle has said, it was as if they were old friends just meeting again. This is the essential kindness that resonated with both of them and endured throughout uh, Janet's life. My own experience with Janet is, is exemplified by uh, a story that uh, one of these typical family dinners that we had, and Ned, Ned Perrin at the time was a young English literature professor, and uh, as some would do in our family, staked out his position that the only real literature is classical literature and everything else doesn't matter. At that time, Ted and I were in high school, and I was suffering through Joyce and Faulkner and Tolstoy, and uh, honestly couldn't stand them, because they went on forever. Can you imagine we were in 11th grade reading Joyce and spent hundreds of pages on a June 16th, 1904 incident, the great stream of consciousness, and 
I couldn't understand why anybody could, you know, bore the reader so long. Anyway, Janice said nothing, listened, came up afterwards and said, you know, you might try Nero Wolfe, you might try John le Carre, you might try Donald Leone, you might find some interest there. And of course I did, and um, I still, as many of us do, read mystery stories. Um, there, there's nothing uh, that a, a great uh, mystery writer can't say that a classical writer could say. Uh, I, one of my favorite uh, uh, John le Carre statements is the, what I call understatement, we're all fallible, but some of us a little more than others. Uh, anyway, lifelong uh, Janet would send me the New Yorker subscription every Christmas, which she was concerned that I would look at different points of view. Um, the, the final thing I want to say is that my grandmother Cunningham uh, was Irish and had a number of Irish sayings, but Perhaps what was most meaningful, if I can find it, um, was, a, I, was what was next to her bed. Um, it was an Irish blessing, um, and it goes as follows. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you. Of his hand. When we have the reception, I would like you each to look at Janet holding my grandson about six months ago. That's, that's, uh, that's not your blue book, sir. David? David? You're taking away his prayers. <laughs> if, if you don't want to pray, you don't have to. feels good. Good morning, everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Susie McGee, and I have the honor of representing Janet's many friends in the Garden Club and the Altar Guild. As I spoke with people about their remembrances of Janet, a very consistent picture emerged, best expressed by the citation that she was awarded at the last annual Garden Club meeting. And I quote, with appreciation and gratitude for gracious dedication and service as president, treasurer, and beloved member. In her kind and gentle way, she was a mentor to us all." End of quote. Janet has also been referred to as a lady, always impeccably dressed and beautifully groomed, a friendly, quiet, gracious presence with a twinkle in her eye, modest about her many accomplishments, intelligent, capable, and very good company. She was an active and productive member of the organizations that she chose to be a part of. And people involved in the church's annual bazaar still, in fact, this particular past year, talk about her ginger honey, for which she was famous. Janet is also remembered for her sense of fun and her firm opinions and standards. Many was a time that she was seen with Burnley, Carol Ward, and Marion Pennell giggling as they made their way to the GW Tavern for dinner after a hotly contested rubber or two of bridge. In short, we will miss her lovely, gracious presence in our lives and our sympathies go to you, her family. Those who are able, let's rise for the Lord's Prayer. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our fa- to all together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You can be seated or stand as you like. For our sister Janet, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Janet and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You promised eternal life to those who seek God. Bring our sister into your all-encompassing eternal love. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. And now we are all invited, anybody who would like to, to pray spontaneously. I'll start. Loving God, you gave Janet the gift of authenticity. May we receive her energy to live the truths deepest in our hearts. Hear us, Lord. For her son Will and his wife Sandy, who are unable to be with us, that they may know her love and ours in their struggles. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. For all of our family members united through live streaming, that our bonds and commitment to one another may be strengthened. Hear us, Lord. Anyone else would like to pray? This now is the moment. Father of all, we pray to you for Janet and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them and may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, who with sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only art immortal, the creator and maker of all, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. For so you did ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but only life everlasting. Merciful Savior, we commend now Janet to you. Receive her, we beseech thee, as a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Accept her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of your saints. Finally, may that peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, may it keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and remain with you all the days of your life. Amen. The family invites all to a reception in the parish hall afterwards for a chance for us to meet and greet and comfort one another. Thank you for coming. Go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.